This segment of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. 14% of the global burden of disease is attributed to mental, psychological, neurological, and substance abuse disorders that based on figures compiled by the World Health Organization. So according to Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands, most of the people affected do not have access to the treatment needed. And that's the rationale behind the launch of the Mental Health Gap Action Program, commonly referred to as MHGAP. The program focuses on upscaling mental health services. Training has been introduced to staff at primary care centers and community clinics. And this incorporation of mental health treatment in all primary health care facilities ensures that Bahamians who present for treatment of any complaint should have the presence of emotional or mental issues detected and addressed, and if necessary, referred for further treatment. Primary care servers participating in Wednesday's MH GAP workshop will join 91 physicians who have already completed training through an MH GAP program, in addition to more than 100 nurses. I believe that these numbers reflect the depth of our continued commitment to the MH GAP program across our entire public health system. As health providers, we can look at the implementation of MH GAP as a successful facet of our evolving primary care model. With this program, we've been able to expand access to mental health services within the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Dr. Sands says he is convinced that as the work of the MH Gap continues in the coming years, there will be many examples of how the initiative and its impact are making a difference in the lives of those with mental health and substance abuse that might have gone undetected, untreated, or managed with a lack of concern. Meantime, the Ministry of Social Services in talks with the Attorney General's Office to review regulations of the 2014 Disability Act. According to Social Services Minister Frankie Campbell, the idea is to ensure it keeps pace with what's happening now. We're going to review, we're going to put in place an inspector regime to ensure that there is compliance. And we're also reviewing the disabled parking spaces to ensure that they are where they're supposed to be, to ensure that only persons who have permission to use them are using them, and to ensure that persons who disregard the rules regarding them will have some consequence. Minister Campbell says the overall intention is not to simply impose a fine and collect the funds. We hope to be able to report that not a dollar was collected because no one reached the disabled parking spot. The minister opted out of giving a timeline for the imposition of fines. And St. Lucia's taking over the chair of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, ending the Bahamas' two-year term. The election took place ahead of the official opening of the State of the Tourism Industry Conference Tuesday evening. New chair St. Lucia Tourism Minister Dominic Fetty said he was humbled and proud that his colleagues had placed their trust in him, adding that the CTO has the opportunity to advance its strength of its collective purpose. You see, according to Minister Fetty, while the Caribbean is one of the strongest and one of the most iconic and aspirational travel brands in the world, it is the most underutilized. The St. Lucia Minister has named Tiffany Howard the Acting Chief Executive Officer of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, Chairman of the CTO Board of Directors. According to the CTO Constitution, the Board Chairman and the Chairman of the Council of Ministers and Commissioners of Tourism must come from the same member country. On the various subgroups, Curacao representing the Dutch Caribbean, Haiti the French Caribbean, Bahamas and Jamaica, the independent Caribbean community countries, and the Cayman Islands, the British Overseas Territories. Our final story is up next. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.